December the 14th, 2020. Guys, you're looking at uh, some free software, and if you go to bpearthwatch.com and scroll down on the right, you'll see a blue box that says eSword. You can click there and download this software that I'm, we're lo looking at now. And uh, many of you know what it is, but there's a lot of new folks that come in, and I just want to say that it is a um, Bible search software that includes a lot of information, and uh, such as search functions and uh, concordances. In other words, you can look up the, each word in here in both Greek and Hebrew, depending on if you're in the Old or New Testament, and you can search for words or you can search for verses tremendous tool but uh, in the last video that i did concerning uh revelation a week or so ago i was right here in revelation 7 if you remember that video if not go, i will link to it in the uh, description below but I, i'm gonna touch on 7 because i want to go to 8 and part of 9 but i want to make sure we're kind of looking at this now again i want to say this guys i'm not a preacher I just study this. I've studied it for over 40, almost 45 years. And uh, I've learned a lot. And I just want to share that. I'm open for comments on what you think. This is just what I think. And it's my opinion only. Okay? I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But it starts out with the 144,000 of Israel sealed. And it says, After all these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Now who ascends from the east? What messenger? Having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. What did he say? He said, Hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of god in their foreheads now that's why the mark of the beast will not affect the children of god because that mark or that seal is happening and this happens at the end of the tribulation of man and before the wrath of god and it goes on it talks about the that there's 12 different tribes with 12,000 12, each, 144,000, but that is out of the tribes of Israel. But then it goes on to talk about the rest of the planet. And it says, it's a, again, a great multitude from every nation. Revelation 7, 9, And after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds, and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. Guys, this tells you that they have made it through the tribulation. All na kindred, people of all nations, kindreds, tongues, all of my brothers and sisters, and cried with a loud voice as they were saying, Salvation to our God which set up upon the throne and unto the Lamb, and all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne in their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. They made it through the tribulation and the people that were already there and the angels were uh, Again, they were in glory and wisdom and thanksgiving. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, this is important. What are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence they came? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God. We, we made it, guys. And serve him day and night in the temple, and he setteth, and he that setteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Now, guys, in this temple, do you realize if you understand, and if you study the Bible, who are the pillars of this temple? Who holds it up? It's the elect. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Now, this is important because. 
we talked about the word son in the Hebrew, and it means the same thing in Greek, but it's different. And that's where you could, this is a very important tool. Um, let me just finish this 717 and we'll go to that too. But it says, for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. We know that's Christ. And shall lead them into living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all all tears from their eyes. Let's go back to 716. I just wanted to finish it. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. And here's where the software's functions really come into effect. Right here, we're looking at the King James Version. Top left, click on King, King James Verse um, Plus or King James Version Plus, excuse me. Click on that and you'll come down here to 716 and you click on the word Son. It's, it says G2246. Now remember in Malachi, it was an H number because it was in Hebrew. This is in Greek. Some of it's Aramaic, but the Greek is uh, what we're looking at here. And it says Helios or Helios, some say, a ray perhaps akin to an alternate of G138, the sun by implication light, the east sun. But this is the sun, the same way that Shemesh in the Old Testament is the sun. But when they're talking about the son of God, it is Ben, as in Judah Ben-Hur. We went over this. But again, we're in Greek, and it's the same thing as Shemesh in the Hebrew. But there's, what we're dealing with now is you're in your spirit spiritual body and the sun does not we're not dealing with the same sun who is the light once we are transformed in that moment of that great earthquake when Christ sets his foot down upon the Mount of Olives we're into our spiritual bodies and he is the light it doesn't burn it doesn't sunburn it is an eternal light there is no night and this goes back to when I did the video about the books of Adam and Eve and how they were startled by the day and the night. Remember, guys, when they were first cast out of paradise? There was a dimensional change there. That's why man will never find the Garden of Eden with their physical eyes. Because it is a different dimension. It's very important. So that's why the sun will never burn them ever again burn us the sunlight and them will not burn them or nor any heat because it is the pure light it is not shemesh it is not helios it is ben the son of god and so we're changing at this point revelation 7 we just come out of the great tribulation which we're going to go through but then in chapter 8, we go into the wrath of God, which if you're a son of, or daughter of God or child of God, and you've held steady and you've held fast, then you're not going to be here much past this verse. Because, again, when you've got the numbers up here, it's a little harder to read, so I'm going to go back to just King James Version. These are which they that came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Why? Because they stood for the truth of Jesus and they would not give in. And they made their robes white. But this great tribulation is mentioned three times besides this in, in the uh, New Testament. Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13. Three times for emphasis. And so I'm going to go to Mark 24 just in case we got some new folks here. And I don't want to, I think it's important that we understand it. Let me put it that way. And this talks about uh, really the Sermon on the Mount in a lot of ways. But Jesus went out and departed from the temple and the disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Then he goes into, or again, let me just continue for a moment. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately. Guys, this was not a big crowd like when they fed the masses. This was just a few of his closest trusted disciples. Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's what chapter 7 is talking about, leading into 8, because 
what they were really asking a the question was almost not proper in other words the sign of the coming in and the end of the world are two different things christ will come but then there's going to be the wrath of god on this world but anyway that was the disciples and jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you who man for many shall come in my name saying i'm christ and shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars rumors of wars see you not be troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there should be famines pestilence and earthquakes in divers places guys read this entire chapter but before we get too far away from where we're going on revelation chapter 8 let's just come down here to the very beginning but i want you to read 24 if you have it because it gives you all the things that are going to be in the tribulation the people that came out of tribulation and we're seeing stand before the throne in revelation 7 this is the tribulation there is no easy butterfly effect flip away fly away thing that happens that is a misteaching but here just for example it says woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days okay what does that mean what does that mean who would want god would not uh condemn a woman that was with child or that had, was giving suck in those days this is a spiritual thing it's in red letters christ was teaching if you're with child then you've been impregnated and you've been in bed with the false doctrine satan's false doctrine and the giving and you're giving suck to it in those days means you're supporting that false church or that false religion do you understand what i'm saying woe unto them with a the child and to them give suck in those days because they have been impregnated and are supporting this false doctrine that's what that means and there will be great signs and wonders but it, here matthew 24 29 so we can go back to revelation 8 immediately after the tribulation of those days guys christ red letter read it matthew 24 mark 13 luke 21 three times for emphasis so that christ was letting you know you're not going to float away out of the tribulation of man, but you can make it out at this time after the tribulation before the wrath of God. And that's why chapter 7 of Revelation is so important. Immediately after the tribulation, not before, no matter what your false preacher is telling you that's selling you gold and silver, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken a lot of times guys these stars are angels just like the star that fell in revelation 9 and he was given the key to the bottomless pit and then shall appear the son of the sign of the son of man in heaven when will the sign of the son of man appear in heaven after the tribulation and read it in the verses before this they shall appear the son of the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory guys that glory is so bright it's going to dim out all this crap that we're going through right now that's in the news and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other what did we just read in seven if you missed it read it again this is what we're talking about in the immediately after the tribute why is there a tribulation of man and then the wrath of god because man has brought this upon ourselves okay we're going through this and it's going to be a refiner's fire like will you make silver stronger you make a sword stronger you keep on putting it through the fire but god intends for his elect to make it out why 
Matthew 24, 31, I just read it. And he shall send his angels with a great sign of a trumpet and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Let's go back to Revelation 7 just a moment. And it, again, coming right back, after these things, I saw the four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not plow, uh, blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. That's where Christ comes in, this angel from the east. And that's what we were just talking about in Mark 24. They're going to seal the servants of, God's in their fore, of God in their foreheads, our foreheads. In other words, I don't know honestly, and I don't think any man knows exactly how this seal occurs. Is it a supernatural event to where suddenly from Shemesh, the healing wings of the sun, which Malachi describes, that the information's coming in to where it opens your eyes, starts to open your spiritual eyes and ears. But again, that's what we're dealing with here. So again, this seven, which the chapters aren't really numbered in the uh, Greek writings, but it says, what we, but the trumpets are. But they shall hunger no more, nor neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them the light. The physical sun is not important anymore. You're not going to be in your physical shell. And shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, this is where you want to be, okay? This is where you want to be. You don't want to be in to chapter 8. Let's look at that. Now, as I said, the chapters aren't really numbered like that, and the verses aren't really numbered, but here, Revelation 8, 1, and when he opened the seventh seal, this is numbered. Seven is spiritual perfection. There was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Think about maybe one of those prayers. God, when will this injustice end? And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. That's it. We've been sealed in seven. Here is the earthquakes. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpet, trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now, guys, you can read more of this. But what I'm saying is a lot of people, I think, and this, again, is my perspective, and I'd love to have the input, but I think chapter 7 and chapter 8 separates the redeeming of the elect, God's children, and then the ones that are left. Remember, even though all this happens, they would never repent. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, there was followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. Now remember, before this they were told not to hurt the grass or the trees until the man or the elect and God's children had been sealed in their forehead. This is different. Now the earth is being affected. And the second angel sounded was a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. Guys, do you know the sea is the people? Like the beast that rose up out of the sea, up out of the nations, out of the people. It was a man. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. This is different. Now we're into the wrath of God. You don't want to be there. With what we're seeing in today's news, with the election and the elector votes, electoral votes, guys, there is a lot of problems coming. So now is the time to get your house in order. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Time is very short. You don't want to be in chapter 8. One of the reasons I'm saying it's short is if you look around and you talk about precious metals or you search for certain metals, understand what I'm saying? Look online to see if you can find some. They're not there anymore. Things are about to happen very quickly. And it you got to be, again, have your house in order. And uh, you look at one of the things, the cure that's going around. It was passed out across the U.S. today. One of the articles is talking about it won't be long before your grocery store and your local drugstore has this cure. Okay? So, <clears throat> in order to travel, to do certain things, you're going to have to have your little cure card, right? Not if you're prepared not to have to go to these places. If you have enough supplies to make it through the first wave, listen to, listen to what I'm saying. The first wave of the cure may, as we saw in uh, Australia, shock so many people that it will be thrown down. So you don't want to be in the first wave of the volunteers of the cure. You don't want to do that. You want to be prepared not to be a part of that let that tsunami pass and clear eyes, clear minds will see the effects. There's things we can do. Get your house in order. The time is short. It's a heads up, guys. Be safe.